All right. Hey, team. Good morning, GDQ Nation, or good morning, or, you know, we're it's still nighttime, wherever we're at, however you want to look at it. But that doesn't matter because we're here. We're running Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus Any Percent Cutscene Skip. This is a brand new category, something I kind of made up off the rip. Uh, so I'm very, very excited to share this with you. Um, so I think we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. So I'm going to count down. Uh, we are going to go in three, two, one, go. Right, so this is Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. This is, uh, despite you know the naming convention, it's actually the third game that Machine Games released in their uh, alternate history, alternate timeline um, revival of the Wolfenstein franchise. I love this game to pieces. This is my favorite Wolfenstein game. This is the first game I, I actually played in the franchise. Um, absolutely love it to bits. Um, I've been running this game in particular uh, for about coming up on three years now. Um, so very excited to show this off. Um, essentially, this is going to be the direct sequel to Wolfenstein The New Order, uh, which was 2014. And uh, this game sort of takes place like right after, like I like like in Media Race, like right after that. There's a lot happening. So I'm gonna try my best to explain uh, things um, as I get the chance to. But as you might have seen, this is cutscene skip. Uh, so essentially, uh, one of the cool things about this game is the story is very important, um, but it's kind of important to the point where there are a lot of sections where we're kind of just waiting for the story to happen. We're kind of just, you know, sitting here doing a whole lot of nothing burger. Um, so one thing uh, that I wanted to kind of develop uh, for this speed run for this game was something that allowed us to skip the cutscenes. Um, so as it turns out, there is a mod, it's called the Kives mod, or also called Advanced uh, Settings, where it allows for us to uh, sort of have some quality of life uh, settings for the game here. And one of them is actually a cutscene fast forward button, which allows us to fast forward through any section in the game we want. Uh, in particular, this is really good because it allows us to fast forward through some of those cutscenes, which we aren't actually able to skip uh, because they're in-game cutscenes. So we're gonna be seeing that uh, after this first level here is over, we got another minute or two here left. Uh, the other thing which we actually already saw, I didn't mention it because I was too busy yapping, uh, is cutscene deletion, which is something that I also kind of just discovered. Um, so essentially, uh, besides the in-game cutscenes, all of the uh, other cutscenes, the pre-rendered ones, are all video files. Uh, so that means you can go in the game files and just delete them and they just won't play. Um, so that's actually not that helpful uh, in particular because a lot of them are used to mask loading screens, which has kind of been part of the course for all of these games. Uh, but there are some that actually don't play during loading screens, they kind of just play for the love of the game. And with those ones, uh, when we delete the files for them, they just don't play and we're able to just move on to the next section of gameplay, which is great. Um, so there'll be a couple instances of that. There's one level in particular, Mesquite, where it's like literally the whole level. Um, so that's gonna be the first chapter, which is awesome. We kind of just blaze through that. Um, BJ at the end of the New Order, which is the prequel game to this, um, he got injured really badly. Uh, so much so that he really should not even be alive right now. But because he's the GOAT of all time, he kind of just is. Um, so that's that. So now after we skip this uh, loading cutscene, we're going to see our first instance of uh, cutscene skipping. Um, we're also going to skip our VR morning. But essentially, we're just going to press our keybind and we're just going to fast forward to these cutscenes. Um, here's where I would issue like a, a gore warning. Uh, Caroline here, our bear is going to get her head cut off in a second, but uh, it's kind of comical because it's sped up so fast, so uh, there's just a warning there. Normally this is the uh, part where I would like kind of hash out the story details, but because this goes by so fast now, we're not sitting for like five, six minutes. We're kind of just, in a second this cutscene is just going to be over. You know, when, when you speed up the cutscene like this, I feel like some yakety sex would really <laughs> benefit. See, if we could mod that in there, that'd be great. Yeah, it kind of just is, it's like, it's like Tom and Jerry, that cartoon going on. Yeah, yeah, it turns, yeah, it turns into a cartoon, basically. So, yeah, that is this Ashmerzer cutscene. Um, we're also going to see our first instance of the Any% percent, uh, sort of category uh, coming in here as well. Uh, for anyone who knows me, uh, I'm a big purveyor of running these games glitchless, um, but I actually uh, just recently uh, learned the Any% percent run for this game. 
Um, I actually was doing my first runs in practice this game in the practice room at SJQ this past uh, summer, which is pretty funny. But uh, I've learned this, and we've now got uh, cutscene skip, which I, I love. It's so awesome, and I'm so glad that I'm able to sort of share this. Um, but basically, what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to see our first out of bounds for the run. And essentially, what will happen is any surface that you can vault over, uh, and there also happens to be a low ceiling, if you vault over it, um, BJ's head will pop through the ceiling. And if you jump, you can pop up out of bounds, and then you can kind of do whatever else you got to do. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. We're also going to do it a couple other times in the run. But it does look pretty cool, actually, when you get it. So we're going to go ahead and lock in here. Keep your shit together, boy. Need you to step up now. We're also going to do a cool thing, which is uh, animation canceling. You can, uh, when you have the melee in this game, which is an axe, um, sometimes there are animations where BJ will pull it out. You can kind of just cancel it um, by pressing shift again, and it just won't play, which is pretty cool. A cool little skip here, or try and skip this little section by jumping to this ladder. There we go. Doesn't save that much time, but it does look cool. It's pretty swag, I'm not going to lie. So um, we started doing that. But here we are going to get to the actual out of bounds part, which uh, looks really awesome. So we're going to kill Commandant 1, kill Commandant 2. We're going to go into this section here. We're going to vault over this crate here. We're not going to sprint off of it, that would suck. Oh. Almost trying to get BJ's whole body out of bounds here. All right, we'll try it again. Kill these guys just so they don't get in the way. There we go. That's how that's supposed to work. Uh, next, we're going to jump up here out of bounds to move on to the next section. All right, one more time. There we go, and we're not going to fall off the map. There we go. So that was uh, Ouch Marcher Out of Bounds, Ouch Marcher Skip. Essentially, we just skipped the whole like other half of the level, which is pretty great. Uh, essentially, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to do a big sort of loop-de-loop. -loop. You're supposed to loop around the level and come all the way back to here. Uh, but we can skip the whole outside portion and some other stuff uh, by doing that Out of Bounds, which is awesome. So we're just going to chill here till the end. We've got another out of bounds we're going to do the next level. But okay, if you have any messages, any donations, feel free to just hop in here. Oh, I have some. Uh, I have some incentives that I think people need to hear about. So, in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two, we are now seventy-three percent of the way there for the thousand-dollar incentive to find the Animal Chin Ramp, uh, where uh, Big Law will track down the elusive Animal Chin Ramp during Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two. So we donate that. We're almost there. We're almost there. Seventy-three percent. We're seven hundred and thirty dollars out of a thousand. Uh, but we have a new incentive also opened up. Uh, for $2,500, we can pet Torgal in Final Fantasy 16. Good puppy gets pets on the head. We do want to see that. The people always ask, can you pet the dog? You can if you donate. That sounds good to me. Shoot, I love petting the dog. Yeah, pet, pet the dog. Um, but where we are now, this is Section F. Uh, so essentially the lore here, so basically the whole fact of the matter is um, in the first game, uh, we we're sort of working towards liberating uh, Europe from the Nazi control. Um, this game focuses on uh, the United States and liberating the United States um, from Nazi control. Um, so essentially, uh, we're working out of a submarine it's called the Edith Hammer. We captured it in the New Order. Um, however, the big bad of this game, Frau Engel, Mima, Becky with the bad jaw, whatever you want to call her, um, she sort of found out where we were. So. Um, she was able to do so by uh, this section F here, which is a hidden section of the submarine um, where these Nazis have been sort of broadcasting um, our location back to the base. So we gotta go take care of that. That was not great. Thank you, William. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do section F skip. So um, like that out of bounds, um, there are also some skips 
where there's just locations that don't have collisions. So we can just kind of vault into that uh, section right there uh, and get out of bounds. And then we're also going to get to a trigger where we can teleport to the end of the level. Um, there we go. That is one of the cooler out of bounds because you kind of just, it's not very hard to do. All you have to do is just sort of vault onto a wall that has no collision. And there you go. So. Uh, we're going to do another uh, skip like that, um, which is aptly named Section F Skip 2, Section F2 Skip 2, or whatever, uh, you know, works. Um, so now we've just got uh, some home base little stuff here. Um, for certain things, uh, this is kind of the case also in the New Order, uh, where it'll just be like little home base missions where you just do little stuff around wherever your base is. Oh, okay, cool. That was always kind of bad. Um, saves us from having to go down there and track down a drone. How was my shooting range? We're talking to set. Then we're gonna go see Anya here, a little wifey. We're supposed to have this whole emotional moment. Caroline was kind of the goat. Um, she led the Christ High Resistance um, in earlier titles, um, but she we're, we're now kind of the our resistance um, in earlier titles. Um, the moment with Anya, they're talking about Caroline, but uh, because we're speed owners, we kind of don't care. So we're just going to go ahead and come to the next section here, which is White Store. Speaking of why we are playing on the white timeline, uh, this game in the New Order uh, operates sort of on a alternate timeline system kind of thing. Um, so with this one, we get the, 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 the diesel craftwork uh, as the legendary weapon, which is this big sort of diesel grenade launcher looking thing, which is great. Um,
That would be great. Um, Incidentally, stuff that you can donate towards, if you want, um, we have some incentives. We have some incentives. Uh, Well, I know I brought them up not too long ago, but it bears repeating. Uh, Finding the Animal Chin Ramp in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. So Big Law will track down that elusive Animal Chin Ramp during the run. Uh, We're at $730 out of 1000 that's 73%. That's just math right there. I watched Square One TV as a kid because I'm 10,000 years old, so I know that that's math, and math is good. We also have an incentive to pet Torgal in Final Fantasy 16. We do want to pet Torgal. Torgal is good puppy. Good puppy deserves pet on head. So that is $2,500. Uh, we don't have any donations towards that yet. I feel we should pet the dog, but first, I do want to see Tony Hawk met... Uh, I I do want to see the Tony Hawk incentive met. If I could meet Tony Hawk first, that's also cool. But Tony Hawk incentive met first would be really nice uh, because that run is coming up after Resident Evil Survivor. So if we can get that going, that would be great. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, is everyone is everyone messing with the donuts in the chat? Is everyone messing with the donuts in the chat? I did. I did that at the beginning. the The donut meme happened, and I did. I made that meme after a good five minutes. That was five minutes well spent. I feel on on donut that is either dancing or being electrocuted or or having problems. Unclear what is going on with donut, but. <laughs> We had more animated emote slots than static, so Donut is doing a Donut dance of some variety. How is, but how is, how are you doing, Chad? I'm looking, I'm looking at you, Chad. How are you doing? How are you doing? You having fun? Are you posting donuts now? Good. Everyone's having donuts. Good. Uh, so one thing that I want to let you all know, Chad, is that next weekend. If you knew this, next weekend, GDQ is going to have their third annual Latin American Heritage Month celebration. And it's right right this same channel, Games Done Quick. Uh, You can catch stellar showcases and speedruns performed by Latin American speedrunners. And that starts at 1 p.m. Eastern on October 19th and 20th. So make sure you're following the channel. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be happy. It's going to be fun. It's going to have video games in it, probably, in some capacity. I would, I would imagine. Yeah, we're don't worry. Tech, tech team is still sweeping, sweeping the gremlins out of the system. The gremlins are getting in there. Like I said, it's spooky season. There's probably some sort of Draculas or perhaps a Jason Voorhees or two is is walking around on the computer, and we're getting them out of there. Getting them out of there. So. How, how are my vibes? Chat wants to know how my vibes are doing. I am very tired. <laughs> I spent a few hours playing Resident Evil 4 Remake. Um, I've played the original, so I decided to finally play the remake. That game is hard. <laughs> that is harder than the original. I am a tired person. I have been up for a while. <laughs> so, <laughs> my brain is, is becoming a sludge and leaking out my ears. And you know what? That's okay. That's valid. I feel that's valid. You know, chat, chat. What are what are your Halloween vibes? What are you what are you all doing for Halloween, chat? I've I've been I painted a pumpkin that might show up on on the GDQ Twitter at some point. GDQ social media. I did paint a pumpkin. Um, I've been I like to play spooky games and watch spooky movies uh, every October. So I uh, like I said, Resident Evil Four uh, remake. I showed uh, one of. Uh, if you remember from any photography shifts you might have, a French toast with someone who's a, a consistent photography volunteer. I finally showed him Castlevania 64. <laughs> and if you've never played it, oh boy, are you in for a treat? Oh, goodness gracious, what a video game. Silent, so, oh, you've been playing Silent Hill 2 Remake? That's good. <laughs> All our brains are become mush. Good. Watching a horror movie every day since October 1st. That's good. Spooky Scary Skeletons? Yes, please. Oh, going going to Haunted World with the local furries there. Uh, I don't know. Do furries have costumes ready? 
I don't know. Do, do furries have any costumes ready to go, though, once Halloween rolls around? I don't know. Not sure. I'm being silly. Yeah, I've been been getting into the vibes. I'm doing doing an annual rewatch of Over the Garden Wall. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I've uh, I haven't uh, I haven't played it yet, but I still need to pick up uh, Zoochosis. Uh, I've been been meaning to play that. That just came out not too long ago. It's a game where you uh, care for zoo animals that have uh, body horror. <laughs> Their body horror mutants. Um, I, that, that looked interesting, so need to pick that up. Yeah, did, always, always loving the uh, the horror vibes, the the horror community. Uh, I'm gonna try to convince some people to play. Um, uh, <laughs> Fatal Frame. If, you, if if there's ever a game that you want to have people that are easily startled play, it's Fatal Frame. Fatal Frame is just the ghosts just get right up into your face. They could count your nose hairs. They get so close to your face. It's so good. <laughs> For suits aren't Halloween costumes. Hmm. Well, okay. How about this? How about we split the difference, right? Werewolf, but it's super scary. Werewolf. How does that? How does that? How does that do? Can we like? Can we, is, it, is it like? Is that a compromise? Can we like shake, shake, giant clawed paws over that? Oh, your birth! Your birthday is not long after Halloween. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, I get every every year I get like a like a a, a list of of scary games that I want to try either replay or try out for the first time, and then I always forget my list because I didn't write it down. So, <laughs> I am um, some some of my favorites. I feel is uh, I really love Left for Dead and Left for Dead Two. If, I, if there was ever a Left 4 Dead 3, it would make me very happy, but don't think it's going to happen. Um, I love Parasite Eve. Parasite Eve is great. More more body horror uh, animals, I guess. <laughs> it's just That's just the genre, I guess, that I like. Uh, I've played a bunch of the Resident Evils. Not literally all of them, but a bunch of them. All right, so I think I think we're gonna go to a brief break. Uh, I I hope I'm correct on that. I think we're about to go to a brief break. So just uh, sit tight and be right back. All right. We are back. We are, in fact, back. It's true. Oh, re reload my... I'm, I'm reloading uh, some of these dashboard things, but I don't think you actually have to reload them anymore because I'm old and I haven't done it in a while. Oopsie. Uh, but we do have $100 put towards Pet Torgle in Final Fantasy XVI, so we're 4% of the way there. Getting, getting there. Got to get there more, though. Get more over there.
Did you all did you all miss me? I was very I was very scared. All of those Jason Voorhees and Draculas and possibly a Freddy Krueger showed up and they were they were scared me. You all would protect me from various famous movie monsters, right? Chat, I believe in you. I be- I believe I believe in your spirit, in your Halloween spirit. See, chat saying pet a doggo. Exactly, pet a doggo. Pet dogs, pet kitty cats, pet Komodo dragons, pet various uh, colossal squids, and uh, and megalodons and such. They're all they're all, they all need the pets. All of them. So yeah, I uh, I let me actually before I roll a ramble too much. Let me go back to explaining what direct relief does because I'm telling silly Halloween stars, but <laughs> perhaps I should also tell you about the uh, <laughs> about the charity we're doing. So. Direct Relief is a humanitarian aid organization, and they're active in all 50 states and more than 80 countries, and they have a mission to improve the health and lives of people affected by poverty or emergencies without regard to politics, religion, or ability to pay. Uh, You can learn more about Direct Relief uh, at directrelief.org. So if you want to go there, absolutely great, great cause, great cause. That's why we're raising money for it. They're helping out with both of these hurricanes, Helene and uh, Milton. So check that out, please. Um, incidentally, oh, one moment, I'm checking something here on my on my dashboard. Oh, well, I have new information. I have new information about the Toriel thing. So for Every so Torgal is a good dog and deserves all the pets. And we actually every two hundred and fifty dollars gets the good boy a pet, up to ten pets. So we're we're not quite at one yet, but we do need to get to at least one. I feel, but ten pets—that's ten times of being nice to doggy. Don't you think? I think so. Video game doggies are great because sometimes they're super powered and sometimes they're robots and sometimes they're ghosts. Sometimes they're strange, uh, you know, elemental creatures. Sometimes they're legendary, legendary dogs. Always good. By the way, just to let you all know some other stuff that's coming up. Uh, so. Back to Black, the upgrade from uh, Unapologetically Black and Fast kicks off February 7th through the 9th, and that's in 2025, and it's our first ever Black Charity speedrunning event benefiting Race Forward. That, that's pretty cool. I like that. Race Forward works across communities most affected by systemic racism to build collective power for racial e- equity. Uh, you can learn more about the charity by going to raceforward.org. Um, submissions are open from now until November 5th uh, over on submissions.gamesdonequick.com. So you can, and in the coming weeks, we're going to have more information about that coming to you. But if you're interested, uh, please check that out. Please do. Love to see new faces. Love to see new runners. I have been here, again, for 10,000 years. I've been here for 10,000 years. Always love to see new people joining into the fun, right? Always. Back when I was there when the first caveman decided to run a game very quickly. It's true. It's absolutely true. It was Final Fantasy VIII. Seems odd, right? But it was Final Fantasy VIII, and Og was just the greatest runner of all time. The greatest. He didn't quite get the junctioning system, but, you know, this was 10,000 years ago. Uh, no, wait, no, that was... No, sorry, I'm 10,000... Ah, my story... My story's inconsistent. Darn it! Don't tell everyone I'm a liar, chat. Please, keep this between us. Yeah, if you if you all wish to wish to donate and tell me tell me the scariest thing you've ever seen in a video game, 
bonus points if it is not a horror game. Uh, you know, I can I can read it. I can converse. I can converse with people on the internet when I'm not face to face with them, and it's a bunch of text on the screen. I'm a pro at it. As lo- as long as you and I are thousands of miles apart, I am incredibly sociable and very charming. I can assure you. Yeah, I remember. I remember uh, when I was a kid, ten thousand years ago. Uh, I wanted to put on a Bowser costume for Halloween. Now, this was actually before uh, video game character costumes were a thing that was just sold in stores. So, I got a turtle costume and then proceeded to tape uh, white poster board spikes <laughs> to the shell of it. And I had uh, I turned some of that poster board into little cones and tried to tape them to my head as horns. And I also made like a little like snout with it and drew like uh, nostrils on it. But uh, because of the shape of the snout and the fact that nobody knew what the heck I was wearing, uh, a lot of the like parents that opened the doors to give candy, uh, (laughs) they thought I was like a pig monster or something, which, you know, valid, I guess (laughs) not what I was going for, but thank you. Resident Evil, Resident Evil One dogs. Yes, the Resident Evil One dogs, pretty pretty spooky. I remember Resident Evil One remake because uh, you know in the original you open the front door and the dogs are trying to get in. It plays a cutscene of the dogs trying to get in, and then you know your character shuts the door, and that's to explain why you just don't go back out the front door. But uh, in the remake, I was like, oh, I want to see what the how they did the cutscene. I open the door, and the dog gets into the just gets into that main uh, that main entrance hall and just stays there for the rest of the game. Uh, that was that was scary. That was scary times. Ooh, I I also now see that we have a language choice for Final Fantasy sixteen. Uh, the the uh, top two contenders here are German and Italian. So now I haven't played Final Fantasy sixteen yet. Uh, I. I have played a lot of the other main lines, uh, Final Fantasy's not 16 yet, so I actually don't know what the characters would sound like in other languages. Uh, so, uh, I, I actually don't know. if uh, I have not played 16 yet, so I guess... I guess... Uh, we'll, we'll get there. I'll get there when I get there. I've... Uh, <laughs> I have this problem where, like, RPGs... I don't know if y'all knew this, but RPGs are really long. <laughs> They're long video games. So when I play one, I, you know, I can't put it down until I'm done with it, right? So it just sort of takes over my brain like some sort of horrible <laughs> alien parasite <laughs> digging into my eyes and ears. Um, so I have to I have to be careful when I start an RPG. So, like, I, you know... I got a Octopath Traveler two back when it was uh, back when, upon release, and who boy, <laughs> super boss fights in that game get tough. <laughs> it is it is not it is not <laughs> it is not easy. Yes, send keep sending in them donations. You can just. Good, good. I can speak. I can speak perfectly well at what is it four in the morning? Yeah, of course. Obviously, why wouldn't it be? Uh, <laughs> send in these, the scariest thing. You know, you can. The donations can go as low as five dollars. You want to send me anything? Now's the time. We can. We can start a roundtable discussion on the scariest thing in video games. If you think that the the baby Yoshi's singing and Yoshi's story at the beginning are the scariest thing you've ever heard, you know what? You're not wrong. You're not wrong, right? It's your hot takes of what's the scariest thing in a video game. <laughs> Someone in check is I'm 65 hours into Persona 3 and probably 60% complete. No, I have no idea what you mean. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, I did uh, I did Persona 4 for the first time uh, last year and who boy, that game long. That game long. 
Um, I named in Persona Four. I named my guy John Bluey Cartuno, and my head canon was that uh, he moved in from a, like more of a Looney Tunes type cartoon into an anime. So he's just like isn't he's just completely unfamiliar with how like anime after school anime works. <laughs> So yeah, he's he's used to like dropping anvils on people's heads to solve his problem. What's going on here? Personies. Persona's kind of a horror game when you think about it. That uh oh, what's his what's his name? Oh, uh, I'm. Uh, like I said, my brain is turning into mush. The, the duder baduder who shows up if you stay in the dungeon for too long. That guy. He's a fun time. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this Persona player here knows what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> See some of my other... It's like, so I did mention the Parasite Eve was one of my favorite, uh, it was actually just one of my favorite games. It's also one of my favorite horror games. But when you think about it, you know, people say that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Parasite Eve is a Christmas game. People don't really think about that too much. All right. I think, I think we have now taken all the Gremlins and all the Freddy Kruegers and all the Draculas and all the Frankensteins out of the system. I think we're ready to go. Uh, Anarchy is going to be back with Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Okay. Good morning. Once again, GDQ nation. Um, Something about this game just was so excited. I kind of jinxed it saying this would be the fastest that this game has ever been seen anywhere. Um, but, you know, that seems not to be the case. Um, so anyway, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, get started once again. So I suppose we will unpause the timer in about uh, three, two, one, go. Um, so as I was saying... Um, oh, we got a soft lock there. We're going to reload the game. Um... That is not something that happens quite frequently. Um, but essentially, as I was saying, um, this game, uh, the Nazis ended up taking over the world because they were the ones uh, who won the nuclear arms race uh, in this case. Um, so here we've got sort of a blasted out uh, Manhattan, New York here. And this is where we're going to make contact uh, with our first of the resistance. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, meet uh, Grace. Uh, who's one of the coolest characters in this game, uh, by far. I'm going to put some doggos to sleep right here as well. I've got this uh, interesting sort of chase sequence here. But essentially, we're trying to make our way up to the ruins of the Empire State Building, or what used to be the Empire State Building. Let's find the controls and see if it moves. So we're just going to move along some trains here, and then uh, we're going to get one of the cooler sort of scenes in this game. Keep that cutscene. We'll get sort of thrown around like a, like a rag doll right there. But we've got the full power suit there, which uh, keeps BJ from being injured. Uh, it's one of the reasons that he's still up and walking around. If you recall the beginning of the game, where he was kind of just in a wheelchair. Um, Look at these stars. Anya, so, this we're gonna make our way here. There's gonna be a really, really big and scary robot that you're supposed to have this big and scary sort of uh, boss fight with, but um, because we're speedrunners, we kind of do not care. Um, so, we're just gonna run like right past it. You like hear it, it's supposed to be this big and foreboding thing. But, um, that's not my problem, I think. So, Look for elevators, there is a dog behind anything. me, so we're gonna hope it doesn't grab me. That would kind of slip. Make it cool, we dodged it. So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna get to um, basically an arena. There are a couple sections in this game where it's basically just arenas. Uh, where, uh, you know, shoot and rip and tear through some Nazis. Um, for a little bit. So we're going to do it here. We're going to do our last upgrades here. Basically, um, all you really need to know is it's just going to make 
uh, this a whole lot easier. We picked up the marksman scope, the nail gun uh, for this uh, submachine gun, and then we also picked up the marksman scope, which we're going to switch to in a moment uh, once we sort of exhaust all our ammo there. Uh, but essentially, um, we've got the resistance group here. We just need to sort of get them away from the Nazis here in New York. Um, so basically, we're just gonna we're gonna fight our way through them um, until they're gone. Uh, sort of benchmark here. We've got some super soldat in here. We're gonna take care of. This is gonna be one. Uh, there's also gonna be those turrets. Those turrets are kind of important. Um, we're gonna need to. Uh, kill those to make sure that the arena sort of progresses as it's supposed to. Um, if it seems like enemies aren't spawning for quite a while, it's because there's probably a random turret somewhere um, that hasn't been properly disposed of. So, should be a soul den for the next wave that spawns there in that elevator shaft and one that spawns there as well. We're gonna throw two grenades at this one here, the one behind us. There we go. Um, so just take care of that one. Hopefully those will bounce properly. Yep. Get this one here. That other one should be gone. Nice. Now we're just going to do some cleanup on these turrets. And we should be good to go here. Very eventful Manhattan here. There we go. Nice. Right, baby, yeah. Would you stop smiling, Cap? Come on, everybody's off the roof. Uh, so now what we're going to do here is we're not going to miss this jump onto the helicopter. I have missed this uh, way more times than I really would like to admit. So we're just going to wait till it gets nice and close, and we'll jump right into it. Uh, so now we're going to do some more little home base sort of type stuff. Um, we're going to do section F, uh, section F2 skip. Um, so we're going to go back to section F. Um, as it turns out, in this um, in this submarine here, there's actually nuclear warheads. Um, we're going to use those against the Nazis, of course. Uh, so we're going to go down here. We're going to go get them. We're not going to do it in the intended way, of course, but you know we're going to do it nonetheless. So uh, as it turns out, walls down here are kind of a suggestion. Um, so we can pretty much skip this entire section. Uh, by sort of just running into a wall until we clip into it, uh, which is really cool. It's probably one of the easiest skips in this entire run, um, next to the first section of section F skip. How did you endure it so gracefully? We're gonna quick save here just in case I miss it, but I don't think I will. Get inside. So we just vault right into that wall. There's just no closing whatsoever, which is really funny. Uh, and then we're now gonna make sure we hit the checkpoint there, so we can sort of TP up here where we need to be at and swim through this wall and into where we're supposed to be. We're going to open the warhead stockpile and there we go. We've basically just skipped uh, all of this section F part two there. You're supposed to do this whole thing. You're supposed to, you know, kill a sedan and, and run around in circle and all that. But we can just skip it by going out of bounds, which is awesome. Bring it to the old man. Said was it? I briefed him on the particulars. Uh, so now we're going to do one last little home base thing, which is uh, filling up this chopper uh, when the game loads. There we go. Actually, we're going to go talk to Grace first and then we're going to go fill up the chopper. Uh, but because we have done cutscene deletion, uh, the video file that's there just does not play. Um, so that's cool. So now we're going to go fill up this chopper. Uh, that was, this is sort of the reason why we picked up the extended tank for the diesel uh, craftwork. We picked that up so it makes filling up this um, tank here for the section a lot easier. See if this bird is ready to fly like Grace asked me to. Put everything else out of your mind. Chopper's fat and sassy. Should let Grace know. So that we've done that. Uh, what we would usually do also is kind of fill it up. We are going to need the diesel craft work one more time throughout the run. Um, but What's up, man? due to some optimized routing and some you know cool things. Uh, we don't have to fill it up right then, so we can just save some time right there. Um, but now, we're going to go on to the next uh, sort of mission, which is Roswell, which is pretty interesting. Um, real quick, we've got a KKK jump scare. Uh, so this is going to be Victory Day, uh, which is July 4th, 1961. And essentially what had happened was, uh, in this timeline... Uh, rather than July 4th being the American Independence Day, uh, this is the day that the Nazis conquered uh, the United States. So they celebrate this as a victory day. 
But um, what I think we're going to do instead is we're going to take this bomb here, and I think that we're going to uh, blow up the Nazis out of command. Um, and we're also going to save her for this cutscene, uh, which is pretty humorous. But again, uh, this uh, sometimes when I talk about cutscene skip, uh, I say there's three and a half. This is the half cutscene. Um, it's not quite as long as some of the other ones that we'll be fast forwarding through, but I deem it long enough to kind of skip. Once again, it does get pretty comical. We're gonna just whack the sketch up. Um, so there's this whole thing where he's like, uh, we're, you know, technically wanted. Uh, BJ's kind of like a super ultra terrorist, as it turns out, in this universe. Um, not but trust you, Blaskowitz. There's nothing safe. We're, we're, we're in disguise to be able to like carry out a plan. Um, and then, and that uh, commandant is kind of like, oh, you're not. Something's weird with you. Um, but what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to show him these fake papers. And uh, then he's supposed to be like, oh, that's not right. Uh, but what you can do instead is you can hit your melee button and you just wrap it upside down, which is pretty hilarious. Um, oh, okay, I know you've just, uh, you know, had a whole bunch of time to talk about things. But if you have any messages, any donations, now is a great time. All right. Well, let me pull up my donations here. Here we go. So we have... Uh, we have a hundred dollars from TK Wolf, uh, who says, "Cheers, Moonblaze, and thank you all for helping people in need." And they include a heart, so that's just a shout out to just everyone helping out. Uh, we have fifty-three dollars from Rad Ringtail, who does not uh, provide a comment, but you know what? Thank you all the same. And we also have eleven dollars from J Marty, also no comment, but also thank you. You can keep going. All right. Uh, we have $25 from Petty, who says, Love to wake up to see money being raised for a good cause and Nazis expertly taken care of by anarchy. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Yeah, this run has been great. I've, uh, on account of being the 10,000 years old, I, uh, I played the original Wolfenstein back when it came out, but uh, I have not played any of the newer ones, and this is looking great. I want to play these. Funnily enough, my first speedrun that I actually like kind of learned was Wolf Wolfenstein 3D. Um, despite these being the first Wolfenstein games that I played, I went back and was like, oh, I feel like Wolfenstein 3D would be a fun run. It's kind of like Doom, but it's not really like Doom at all. Um, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. it, it's cool, but you know, it's it's not great. So I much rather enjoy these ones here. Yeah, hey, you get to smack him in the face with a <laughs> whatever it was a fire extinguisher or whatever. Heck yeah! Uh, an Bonk. atomic bomb disguised as a fire extinguisher. Oh, it... <laughs> oh, obviously. Only, only things that happen in this game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what we're gonna do here? We're gonna do a little bit of serious time. We're gonna do the hardest uh, trick in the game, which is called the elevator skip. Um, and essentially, uh, we're gonna do exactly what's skipping elevator. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get locked in right here. There we go. There's one more part to it. Oh, I fell off the map. That is unfortunate. Um, so essentially what we have to do, we have to do a whole lot of really good movement to get on the elevator, um, to get onto the elevator and then past the elevator uh, instead of waiting for it to go up and back down and all types of other things. Um, it's very, very difficult. So we're gonna try it again. There we go. Okay, that's how elevator skip is supposed to work. Um, so essentially what you do is you run up the legs of this elevator, uh, and then you have to do some sort of movement jimmying of yourself onto the actual elevator platform, which is the hard part. 
Um, and then once you get onto the elevator, you have to skip past the elevator, kind of do a, a bit of a leap of faith back onto the ledge on the other side um, to try and do that, which is extremely difficult. It's probably the hardest skip in the run. Um, so I'm glad that, you know, it was kind of slow, but, you know, I'm close enough. I'm glad that I even got it all. We're, we're not doing any elevator, uh, you know, standing still of shame. That would kind of suck. But uh, what we're going to do now, this is the end of the Ogre Commando, so we've just planted the bomb in there, so it's going to blow up in a minute. Uh, now we just kind of get out of here. And what we're going to do next is we're going to uh, see the level that takes advantage of cutscene deletion uh, the most. Um, essentially, it's supposed to be a very big lore-driven uh, level. You're supposed to sit through these really long cutscenes. Um, most of them end up actually being optional, but uh, it's a, you're supposed to get a background sort of into who BJ is, his, his past. Um, but what we can do is we can just run into this house, um, skip all of the cool stuff that you're supposed to do. Um, and most of these cutscenes when you're into the house are movie files. Uh, so there's one that we just, that just didn't play. There's going to be one here that also just does not play. This one does play because the game is loading. But this chapter is already very, very short, but this makes it even shorter. So now what essentially is happening is that was BJ's dad. Um, he is kind of a scum of the earth, the worst human being ever of all time. Um, so he kind of called uh, Frau Engel on us. And uh, she knows where we are and she's gonna try and capture us again. We're gonna try our best to not let that happen though. So we're gonna try and escape if we can. All right. Unfortunately, as I said, unfortunately, it's a big if. Um, unfortunately, BJ is kind of kind of getting the short end of the stick here. Um, so he's going to get captured by uh, Frau Engel. And they're going to kind of be doing the victory tour here. So here we have the longest cutscene sequence in the whole game. This is about seven minutes. I think in my submission video, I labeled it as seven minutes worth of burger. Um, kind of just cutscene exhibition just sort of happening. And you kind of can't do anything because BJ is supposed to be, you know, technically in prison. So this is our goat super spice, by the way. Uh, he's going to be our legal counsel. Um, unfortunately, Super Spice is now dead. Um, so that sucks. Um, his last words, some of the greatest last words I think I've ever heard. Uh, it was Space Aliens, man. R.I.P. Super Spice, the goat. Weeks pass, nothing. Or more. I feel myself slipping away. So now we have the sort of main arena of this game, uh, which is the courthouse. Uh, this is uh, often the stuff of people's like nightmares when they think of this game. Um, the courthouse, especially on higher difficulties, is really, really difficult. Um, you have limited resources. Um, essentially what is happening is BJ is supposed to be breaking himself out. Um, he's supposed to be, you know, sentenced to death um, for, you know, being the protagonist guy. But we can't let that happen, so, you know, we're gonna break out because we're just the guy. So we just have to go through this whole sort of arena section, taking out these guys as they come. Or essentially, you kind of just we're gonna sit in the middle of the room where they're gonna sit here, or we're gonna sit up there um, at the judge's desk. This makes it easier to sort of just spot the Nazis as they spawn in. Uh, we're waiting for a checkpoint. There we go. That will mean some super soldats spawn in. And this, we've advanced the arena to the next uh, sort of section. So we're standing up here. One soul down is going to spawn right here, and one is going to spawn right there. First one away from the spawn, it's going to get dark in here. See the big old Ash Mature flying overhead. So these guys will spawn momentarily. We'll drop in from the ceiling. There we go. There's one, there's two, okay. Uh, so we shot those guys in the back. Um, those are their weak points. So it's gonna be dog here, we're gonna put to sleep. 
do there. And there's also going to be a robot. There's going to be sort of the next section there as well. So now all we're waiting is for us to uh, kill enough here that uh, we're going to be looking for two of more of those robots. Those are going to be the next sort of checkpoint uh, we're looking for. And then after that, um, we will be waiting for some more Super Fun and then that'll be that. And we'll have broken free because we're the greatest of all time. So there's one. Maybe one more. Oh, just got one more time. That's cool. The one Super Fun Dan. Oh, blew up a little bit. That's still up. Another, and then this will be the last one. Okay. So that's the courthouse. You would think that we broke free, but that's not actually what happened. Unfortunately, we were daydreaming. Um, and BJ is going to get his head cut off in a moment here. But Jones again looks pretty comical because we're fast forwarding through everything. So his head is kind of just gone now. So one would think that is the end of the game, right? Our protagonist has had his head cut off. What what more could he possibly do? But of course, you know, because we're the guy, you know, we can't leave the story like that. That's, that's just not possible. Um, so what's going to happen here in a moment Look. is BJ actually live. Wow, that's crazy. The god of a mortal space fish swimming in a space fishbowl. Uh, so essentially what happened is PJ's head has been preserved and um, he's going to get a new super soldier body uh, basically sort of sewn so onto his head and it's going to allow us to be, you know, the guy again. We're also going to pick up the battle walkers, which is one of these uh, upgrades for that new body, uh, which is great. And it's going to allow us to do some sort of uh, skip or explodey movement things uh, later down the line. We pick these up, and essentially what they allow us to do is they allow us to go up high um, in levels and reach reach things that we wouldn't normally be able to reach. So we picked those up. We just got a new lease on life now, which is great. Uh, if you play the beginning half of this game, you know how sort of uh, mopey BJ is. Um, one of the core themes is him dealing with sort of uh, dying, essentially. Which, uh, this game is has a great story, but uh, as I said before, you know, we're Single speedrunners, so uh, we need the game to sort of be, go fast, so uh, we kind of don't care at the moment. But I will say to anyone who's, uh, you know, watching this game, this game is a great casual play. I, I love this game. I play it uh, casually every so often. It's definitely an amazing experience, along with the other games uh, in Machine Games Revival of the series, um, especially. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to Manhattan and we're going to go to this bunker. And what we're supposed to be doing is we're supposed to be looking for a dossier that has the location of the next, uh, has the location of the next resistance cell that we're supposed to be finding. Um, but essentially we're going to use a out of bounds to skip this entire thing. Uh, if you have seen uh, the other run I did of this game at uh, June team, I believe 2022, which is, feels like there. forever ago. Um, I showed off the glitches run of this, uh, and this has a lot of tight cycles that you need to make with some doors. Uh, but with the skip here, we're just gonna kind of skip the entire thing, like genuinely. Um, so we're gonna go up here, uh, do the pull out of bounds thing. There we go. Whee! And there we go. That is all of the bunker completely skipped. Uh, it's amazing, amazing skip. Uh, probably the coolest one. I think the one that skips the most as well. Um, so, in order to get back in bounds, we have to pick up the rebreather. Uh, which is to try and sort of keep the radiation out. In the glitches run, you don't actually pick that up um, because it's faster to not bother. But here we actually have to pick it up because it allows us to get back and bounce. Uh, so now we're just going to do a sort of mini arena with these robots here. Um, we're going to go in a circle until we get to there, and then we're going to turn back around. There. And then one is going to spawn right here. 
We're right here close enough. And then we'll come back this way and one is gonna spawn over here also. Okay. And that's the bunker arena. That is, like I said, one of my, my favorite skips in this whole thing. It's, it's very, very easy to do and it skips quite a bit. So now we're gonna go back to the circle. This loading screen is gonna take a really long time, so never fear. Don't fear, it's just gonna take a while. Um, the game is kind of like that sometimes. So, okay, if you have anything, any messages, any donations, go ahead. I'm, I'm I'm super quick at unmuting myself, I promise. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we are still only 73% of the way of getting that find the animal chin ramp incentive for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, but that is coming up after Resident Evil Survivor, which is coming up after this, so I want that incentive met, okay? Don't make me angry. I'll turn green and probably not get any stronger, but I'll turn green and that's going to be problematic for everybody because I'll look like a zombie and it's Halloween. People will start getting scared of me. I don't like that. So please, please donate for it. I don't know where I was going with this bit, okay, but thank you. <laughs> I want that incentive met before we get to the get to the Tony Hawk game. So let's let's do it everyone. We're so close. We have seven hundred and thirty out of a thousand. We can do it. We can get there. I promise. I promise. With the power of you all donating, we can do it. Christ, Captain. Not much sign of civilian life from up here. I hope we're not too late. Okay. Um, walk past that guy. Okay, cool. Uh, so where we are now, we're in New Orleans, which is awesome. This chapter is going to come in about three sections or so. Uh, so this is going to be the first section. Head for the old American uh, so essentially, we're, we're looking for the next resistance cell. Uh, Persuade them to join our call. It's headed by a guy named Horton. He's a pretty cool dude. Uh, we're going to do some of the Battle Walker stuff that I mentioned. Um, so it's going to show up here. Easy. Can't undo your tragedy. But I can punish the people responsible. So what we're going to do is we're essentially, there's this whole section you're supposed to do um, with a crane or whatever, but we kind of don't care. So we're just going to do that. Essentially, you're supposed to like move a whole bunch of stuff and whatever. Um, but if you use the battle walkers, you can kind of just jump over and skip that like that. And it's really simple. So we're going to go ahead here. Going to jump over a wall. Like you get up to the next section we're supposed to get. Fight. Make sure we walk enough uh, to the left there. Uh, so we can jump up. Now we'll just take care of these guys here. We'll make sure we have the right guns out. That would be helpful. And some two soul batons should spawn momentarily. Make sure all these guys are good. Youch! Happens occasionally. One soul down. There's two. Okay, nice. Hellfire, son. All right, so this is the first section of New Orleans. Uh, I guess it's more like two sections, actually. Uh, but it's mainly this section, and then we're going to be going to the streets, taking it to the streets here. Uh, what you're supposed to have, you're supposed to have this cool, like, dog riding section where we ride this uh, big old Panzerhund uh, dog that has been repurposed. Um, but, you know, it's much slower to do that, actually. So, um... I'm just going to run through the streets, it's a lot easier and a lot faster. Um, and there's a handful of sections to, to this, within this section here, too. So we're going to go here, and then we're going to go to, we're going to go to the sewers, uh, and then we're going to go back on the streets again, and then it's going to be, it's going to be chill, I promise. So also we're going to do some more battle walker shenanigans. So, quick little skip there. Whee! Uh, so now we're gonna go here, we're also gonna do a quick little swimming section. Um, it's gonna be here when we jump in there. It's also gonna happen towards the second one as well. 
I'm not sure that this game actually has. The other two games before this one have something called straight swimming, sprint swimming. Um, they're interchangeable. Uh, where if you just spam the sprint button, you can swim really fast. Um, I don't think this game has that, but I kind of just do it anyway because I think it's fun. Um, even if it doesn't actually make a difference, it does in my heart, so it's, it's fine. So, did the catacombs section there. We're gonna kind of do another mini catacombs street section here. So we're gonna load in, we're gonna see a really, really big, scary robot, but we kind of don't care. Uh, because we're trying to go fast, we need to just run past it. Captain, getting swamped here. We're standing on top of the Lakeview apartment building. So many of them, they just keep coming. So many Nazis, it never ends, does it, Captain? Can you dig it, man? Wyatt, ow! Can you dig it, man? Wyatt, great character, excellent character. Um, this little catacombs here. Uh, you can see we're actually going so fast that the dialogue kind of trips up over itself. Uh, Hor uh, Horton was supposed to have a whole thing to say, but we're going so fast that he just kind of didn't say it. Uh, that's also going to happen here. Um, coming up, some more dialogue sharing and stuff is going to happen. Essentially, uh, what we're going so fast that the dialogue can't uh, catch up, so it just sort of overlaps on itself. Uh, you might have actually heard it earlier in the first section of where Anya does it as well, because you're going so fast that it just overlaps each other. Um, so that was New Orleans. Uh, we're now going to go to, um, if you thought in the New Order, uh, us going to the moon was cool, uh, now we're on Venus, which is uh, where they have now moved the, the base that we blew up earlier in the game, they moved it to Venus now, essentially is what happened. Um, so now we have one of the most interesting whole entire things in the game. Uh, essentially, uh, we've uh, faked playing a role in a movie. Uh, we're supposed to be an actor who is playing BJ. Um, or auditioning to play BJ, but we're actually BJ, so we oh know we're here where they would never expect it. Um, also, by the way, um, the director for this movie, um, quick jump scare warning, uh, Hitler does actually appear in this game. Um, so he's still alive in this timeline, um, similar to other games where Hitler does still appear um, as like Mega Hitler. He's kind of just still alive here. But a German race will rise again! Shit. Okay. Uh, so it's just have that thing where we're pretending to be the actor. BJ is not a very good actor, as it turns out. So we had to write down the lines, but then they got sort of wiped off, and then there's this whole thing. Uh, so now we're just going to skip this cutscene. This cutscene is also very, very long. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. Um, I had to remind myself to actually skip the cutscene. I'm so used to playing this game without cutscene skip. This, the whole thing is so brand new that uh, sometimes when I'm so locked in, I'll just like sit here and just like forget. Um, so while we're doing that, oh, okay, if you have any, any messages or anything, you go ahead. Ah, oh, once again, I'm the champion of unmuting myself super quick. Um, all right, let's pull up this. Uh, anonymous since $25, no comment, but thank you so much. It's going to go right to a great cause. Uh, and one more time sends $100, also no comment, but thank you so much. Direct Relief is going to be making good use out of all those donations. So true. Um, doing this... Uh Marathon, mini marathon, coming together on such short notice uh, for a cause is very relevant. Um, I so appreciate it. I'm very glad to be able to show off this game despite the you know short shenanigans we got going on. Um, you know we're here persisting, uh, nevertheless. So. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're supposed to have this whole sort of Venus uh, surface section um, where you're supposed to you know walk. On Venus, just like uh, in the New Order, where there's a moon section, where we got to go on the moon and have this sort of anti gravity uh, cool thing going on, got to get into the spacesuit and a whole lot of things. Um, so, here we get to do kind of the same thing. Uh, we also, there's supposed to be an added mechanic where you're worried about heat because on Venus it is very hot. Um, but because we're so speedy, uh, it doesn't actually matter. We've got that uh, little cold meter bar you can see. Um, but it, like I said, we're so fast it doesn't actually matter. We don't have to worry about filling it up ever. 
Um, so we're gonna do two things in this chapter here uh, upcoming. We're gonna do one uh, sort of semi skip thing. I used to call it Venus skip, uh, where we're gonna use the battle walkers to skip some sections upcoming. Um, but then, when I learned any percent for this game, there's also an out of bounds uh, skip as well, um, which is actually Venus skip. Um, so we're just gonna we're gonna do Venus skip Venus skip one and Venus skip two, I guess. Uh, until we come up for with better names for them, but uh, we're gonna come up here and quick save just in case. But basically, we're just gonna do some really cool shooting. Yeah. I'm gonna kill it super for that and just make my life easier. What we're gonna do is we're gonna jump up here, use our battle walkers, hop up onto these pipes, run up here. Jump, use battle walkers again, use battle walkers a third time, use battle walkers even a fourth time, and there we go. We just skip that entire outdoor section. Um, essentially, that's that's that. Very very cool. And now we just got to gear up for basically what is the last um, last out of bounds, last skip in the run. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go out of bounds in one of these rooms, and we're gonna use that to skip an auto scroller, uh, which is pretty long. Um, it kind of, it'll look kind of scary because we're just going to look like we're doing a bit of a leap of face jump uh, into some geometry that we can't see, but uh, I promise I know what I'm doing. We're also going to do lots of quick saves just in case we somehow muck it up a little bit. We're going to shoot that guy here just to make my life easier. Just do one more. Okay. Oh. Try our best to get uh, pushed out just the right way. Okay, try it again. It's being a little bit finicky. It happens. Give it, a couple, give it a couple more tries. Oh, there we go. Okay. That one can be a little bit finicky, but once you get it, it's fine. Here's going to be our little, little leap of faith looking thing here. Uh, looks kind of scary, but it's not that bad, I promise. Uh, so now we're going to actually skip the auto scroller. We're going to jump here. And jump up there and basically what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to do this whole little elevator thing that's kind of reminiscent of the beginning of the game when we were still in the wheelchair and uh, we sort of fell uh but there what happens instead uh is we can just run on top of it uh, and we're able to skip that entire thing we're also going to jump over the dog those dogs i don't know what they're called i kind of just forgot um but they're really scary compared to all of the rest of the dogs in this game I don't know why they look like that. They've got like a big old face laser you and they're like terrifying and blue key, but it's all good. So now all we're going to do is just get out of Venus and we're going to go to the last, um, last little bits of the game. Uh, we've got one uh, little mini section. Uh, essentially, it's a really just a really big cutscene, uh, but we're going to skip it. Uh, just because, you know, we are trying to finish the game. So we're gonna shoot this big old model of Venus right here. We'll go down here. And essentially what we're trying to do here in the first place is we were trying to get these codes for the Ausmercher, which is uh, General Angle's uh, flying fortress. Uh, we're trying to get the codes to disable the defenses on it. And now uh, after we do this next little cutscene thing, uh, we're gonna basically go take the fight to Fire Angle. Meemaw, Becky with the badge all, whatever you wanna call it. So once we load in here, uh, it's a surprise. It's BJ's birthday. Yippee! Um, so essentially, it's supposed to have this big old uh, cutscene, but um, with cutscene deletion, we just kind of skip the whole thing. Um, so we don't even have to worry about skipping it. It just doesn't play. Um, so instead, we just need to go track down Wyatt really quickly. 
and then we will be on our way to the final level or uh, final level in the game. Um, the last end bit is kind of just a, also a walking cutscene, um, but we're gonna we're not gonna skip that because of course it's the end of the game. The little guy died this morning. He didn't eat his cheese. Starved to death. Oh, so shout out Anya, uh, one of the cool, besides like uh, Grace, one of the coolest characters in the whole series. Uh, definitely, she's also like, if BJ's the goat, uh, Anya's like right up there with him. Uh, she's, you know, fighting the, fighting the, the man here. She's like nine months pregnant also in this game. Um, so. I have to give her props. She's she's definitely one of my favorite characters in this in this series. We're in. There are three different Odin control centers on the Ausmerzer. Two of them controlling the automated defense system. The Hugen control center for the port defenses. The Munin control center for the starboard defenses. Finally, there's the Odin main control center for the ship itself. Understood. Okay, uh, so essentially what we're going to do here is, uh, uh, if we had played through the first section of uh, Auschmerzer normally, essentially this would be us just going back through the, the ship in reverse order, basically, um, and moving back around, and doing it with all the new stuff we've learned uh, throughout the, you know, the course of the game, and um, finishing out the story. Um, so... We're also going to utilize our battle walkers here as well, uh, which is pretty cool. So, uh, you would have seen all of this uh, previously had we, you know, played through the played through the levels normally, but you know, we kind of didn't. So we'll be seeing some of this for the first time here. Um, you might be thinking, uh, if we were able to skip our torture. The first time, what is stopping us from skipping it again? Unfortunately, there is an, a known out of bounds uh, for this version of the Asmorts or toward the end. Uh, however, there isn't a way to advance the story uh, using the out of bounds. Make sure the super soul button here dies, uh, just because it's kind of annoying when we're trying to do this uh, animation here. We get kind of locked into it. L H A L L A. There have been. Um, I'd like to say many times, but it's more like, like, three probably. Um, but there have been a handful of times I've lost pacers to dying right there, uh, because I didn't care for the soldat and where he was, and he just kind of killed me. So, now, I walk past that guy, we're coming back to Anya. I need some help here. Hurry, please. I kill these guys here, we're also not gonna die. I've also somehow uh, lost pacers here to dying at this uh, mini arena section here. We're just gonna kill these guys here. And get back to Anya here. William, I'm in here. William, jump into the transport pod there on the other side. I've reprogrammed these to take us to the upper parts of the ship. We can reach the other Odin control centers from up there. Okay, cool. Uh, so now we're basically just gonna go do the other. So there's two computers. We did Hold one. On. We're just gonna go up here and do the other one. Um, yeah, and then that, and then there's gonna be the last sort of the. I'm gonna say the final boss, uh, just because uh, the actual final boss is not. It's not really a fight. We're kind of just gonna uh, kick the crap out of Frau Angle and call it a day. Um, so sort of the culminating fight of the game is gonna be coming up here after we do this next computer. We kill him, uh, and then now we're gonna jump up into that uh, vent right there. We're not gonna die because that would suck. I have unfortunately also lost pacers uh, back in the day um, to like just missing that somehow. It's a very easy jump. I'll keep making my way to the Odin main control center. See these guys. It's commandant there, and let's do this. Oh, last one here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, swag. Also gonna be another scary kind of dog coming up here. Yeah, the start and avoid him. The there we go. Okay. Oh. The okay, kind of wanted me person some lunch meat there, but uh, it's chill. But like I said, those dogs are like terrifying for no reason. Uh, TBH, but it's okay. Now we're just gonna make our way up to the upside of the ship or topside, I guess is the right word for that. We just run past these guys here. We're gonna go up about mm, two more levels here, so we'll go up here. We'll go up to the next section, then we're gonna take an elevator, and then we'll get to the sort of culminating fight. Okay, I should move out of the way, nice. And we'll get to up here, we're gonna take an elevator. And essentially what we're gonna do, we're gonna do there's gonna be two rows or three rows of two super showdown each. There's gonna be these two, those two, the next two. And then technically the like bosses, which are gonna be these really big scary uh, robot guys. Um, however, you can kind of just walk past them and in the interest of you know it being a speedrun, we're just gonna do that. This last one here. Okay, and now we're just gonna wait for these robots to spawn, and then when they spawn, we can kind of just run right past them. Okay, they're supposed to be big and scary, there's two of them, but if you just, you know, run right past them and get up here, we're gonna make our way towards the very end of the game, finally. Ouch. We're also supposed to have uh, this really cool cutscene with Anya. It's kind of the, the goat in this cutscene, uh, but we are gonna skip it. Um, so this is the last area in the game. Uh, essentially, we're finally gonna go kill Mima. We didn't really get to know Mima that much because we skipped all the cutscenes. Um, so we don't necessarily um, have, you know, most of the background you would have uh, usually, but we just gotta know she's a Nazi and she needs to die. So that's all that really matters. Um, and we're gonna do so on live television. Um, we're gonna be spreading the word. Let's do this. The whole point is about, uh, you know, liberating America and letting the American people know that we don't have to be under oppression by Nazis here. So we're going to be coming up on time here. Uh, we're going to do the last uh, cool little bits of tech here, uh, which are just animation cancels. So it's supposed to be, you're supposed to have these scenes with his axe. Um, but if you, like I said, if you just sprint, um, if you sprint, press sprint again, it'll just not fly, which is cool. We're gonna do one more up there before we finally get down to Fire Rhino and we end the whole thing. We're here with a true hero. This needs to happen up close. Okay, we got the last animation script. You, Caroline. Or animation cancel, whatever you want to call it. General Engel! And time is gonna be as soon as we axe Fire Rhino in the face. What the hell? And time. Well, that was awesome. I enjoyed every minute of that. Every single second. That was great. Thank you. So, yeah, that is Wolfenstein 2. Uh, any percent cutscene skip. Um, despite, you know, the whole lot of shenanigans going on in this game, I'm still glad that I got to show off this game in any capacity. Um, I love this game. Uh, even casually, I think it is a great play, and I think it's something that uh, if you like FPS, if you like, you know, shooting up Nazis, I think it's it's a great play. Um, so yeah, that was that. Um, I'm Anarchy. Um, if you like this run, um, most of my other runs that I do are also Wolfenstein games, uh, other machine games games. Um, so if you liked it, you can find me on Twitter and also twitch.television uh, slash Anarchy ASF. That's where I'll be. I also got some uh, cool announcements coming up soon, especially regarding uh, GDQ. So um, if you'd like to stick around for that, you want to hear that, um, you can go ahead and follow me. 
Um, but yeah, we're here for a great cause. So I think you guys should stick around for the rest of the marathon. It's going to be a great uh, weekend full of runs raising money for a great cause. So appreciate you guys for watching so early in the morning. I'll catch you guys next time.